Hi, this is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Center's Focus on Rock. Now, when we think of the classic rock music festival, we'd be forgiven for considering the Monterey Pop Festival as the father of all festival templates. But those who were kicking around the San Francisco scene in 1967 might be quicker to remember the very first rock and folk festival of its time. On the 10th of June 1967, Fantasy Fair and Magic Mountain opened its gates with over 30 bands due to play, including The Doors, The Birds, Plenty of House Angels and a whole lot of drugs. So how did the day shape up? And what exactly is the significance of Fantasy Fair and Magic Mountain? So let us head back to that time, June 1967, a whole two years before Woodstock and just a fortnight before Monterey Pop. And here the cogs were turning for the world's first rock festival, thanks to the Californian rock station favourite at the time, KFRCAM. Perhaps one of the reasons this event has been so overshadowed by later festivals is the lack of tangible evidence by way of coverage. Only a small amount of footage survived, despite its crucial role in the counterculture rock scene. Among the 30 acts that played were The Doors, Canned Heat, Dionne Warwick, Jefferson Airplane, Country Joe and the Fish and the Steve Miller Blues Band. Also on the lineup were The Birds, who at the time, it might be safe to say, were bigger than anyone else on the lineup. In many ways it passed off as the perfect festival day. 36,000 people paying $2, little violence and a whole lot of grooviness. There were certain elements of the event that set it aside from other formats. After scaling the mountain, the festival's attendees were welcomed by a giant inflatable Buddha balloon and two stages. On the main stage, six 14-foot tall banners, each displaying, displaying a different astrological sign, were set up in a row at the back of the stage. The fair element was based on the Renaissance fairs where local folk dressed up in costumes and they had jugglers and acrobats and people reciting verse. Jack Cassidy of Jefferson Airplane remembers, it was part of the whole attraction of the festival, of having various talented people in their community able to express their talent in so many different ways. It was also about crowd participation, the notion that festival goers are the party themselves. Far from a straightforward stadium gig where you have thousands of people just sat motionless in chairs looking straight ahead at a performance, people were expected to engage and to get involved in the trippiness of it all, creating a collaborative and inclusive atmosphere, a formula that rings true in any well-produced festival today. Fantasy Fair and Magic Mountain was produced and sponsored by Tom Rounds and his partner Ed Mitchell. Now Rounds was Programme Director at KRFC, uh, the Bay Area radio station which had been creating a solid radio wave platform for the more alternative music to be emerging at the time. It was decided that all proceeds from the day would be donated to the Hunters Point Child Care Centre in San Francisco. Was the idea of playing for free an issue for artists at the time? It would seem not. Larry Taylor of Canned Heat remembers, there's never any thought of making money off it, it's just what we did. People would get together in a big park and listen to music and hang out. I played music in the 50s and remember wearing cummerbunds and play jackets and uniforms. All of that was just gone all of a sudden. It went into the trash. I got into American Indian beads and pants with hand-painted psychedelic stuff on it. I haven't worn a suit since. It came together out of nowhere and all of a sudden it just became this thing. In retrospect, Fantasy Fair and Magic Mountain was the perfect festival blistering musical performances and no violence, despite the local Hells Angels proclaiming themselves as festival security. And so was born the ideal template for big scale, multi-acted outdoor events as today we enjoy as rock festivals. This is Carrie Cooper for Guitar Center's Focus on Rock. Shop for the greatest selection of music gear on earth in store or at guitarcenter.com.